giving thanks to our Father on this day, praising Him for giving us revelations and understandings of things we have had questions about. I've had questions about the commandments, where, where the commandments were given for a long time after I saw saw the Ten Commandments and after years later I was saved and start on my journey and it I was led to Moses immediately I think because I saw the Ten Commandments so when I got saved I just was uh, connected to Moses and the Ten Commandments and at that time I did not know um, that Moses' uh, father-in-law, I didn't know that he was considered as black. That's what we say. Uh, but I did know that and understand that Zipporah was an Ethiopian. So I've had, I had a puzzlement from then on because I couldn't figure it out. As the Holy Spirit began to open up the eyes of my understanding about Midian and the fact that uh, Jethro is a priest of Midian and that if his daughter is an Ethiopian, then that meant that her dad is an Ethiopian. This was some amazing revelations a long time ago because this did not just happen now. It happened, uh, I think, back in the probably 1989 or uh, around in the 1900s, I know. And so, therefore, as I continued to search... And I, and I, cause I was puzzled as to, okay, where did the, where were the Ten Commandments given? So that was, even though I was reading over and over uh, how Father's people were delivered out of Egypt, I still couldn't wrap my head around the fact that uh, these people were bronze, brown, Colored people because of the television and the movies and everything. But I was, and I was puzzled at that time when I had read that when Father met with Moses on the uh, on that mountain, he told Moses that he was going to deliver his people and bring them right back to that mountain. Well, for some reason. That was hard for me to really grasp. But as the years went by, the Holy Spirit continued to give me revelation. So I discovered that that uh, Jethro, the high priest, was actually teaching uh, Moses. And that was astonishing to me as well. When the eyes of my understanding opened up. And then further along when I found out that Jethro is related to Melchizedek, that was even more shocking. And then when I found out that Melchizedek was married, that was more shocking. So the revelation had this has to do with the where were the Ten Commandments given? And I had seen a map, an ancient map that said all that land called Africa or land of Ham, it was all, it was all um, Ethiopian or Kush land. That's how I, I saw that, that Af Africa was named later on, so that was a puzzlement. And so then uh, the Father opened up my eyes to show me that the commandments were given in where where Moses was, so that was in Midian, and Midian um, 
was was a uh, son of Abraham and Keturah. And so I kept that in mind. So that that meant that they were they were Cushites or Ethiopians, however, however we say it these days, because um, it is so much. Well, anyway, I uh, I've been searching. I, I look for to see. Okay, Mount Sinai is it in Ethiopia? Then it was called Mount Horab is the same as that is in Ethiopia. Mount Paran is that the same as that is in Ethiopia. So I went on and on. And then only recently I came across an article that said that the Ten Commandments were given to uh, Moses in um, Mount Mount. Uh, Simeon capital S-E-M-I-E-N mountains of Gonda, Ethiopia where Moses received the the Torah received the commandments so you can imagine my eyes opened up and I just had to share this today because this is just recently that I'm I'm seeing some more information that I I had not I had not heard before, cause it says after receiving the Torah and Gaiz uh, on the Simeon mountains, well, so it said it, the Torah was written in G E E Z language. On the capital S E M I E N mountains, said Moses led the Israelite to their promised land in the Afar Triangle, the Danikil Depression, where they established Israel Confederation, then a United Kingdom, while the original home of Abraham was near Hara City. So this, I just had to, I wanted to share that piece of information so while um, I was looking at that in still puzzling then I came up this part of the article says Jews, Judaism, Hebrew language and rabbinic Hebrew Torah were invented during 580 to 530 BC by a collusion between Judah, Israelite tribe and Turkey Mongolian colonizers of Neo-Babylonia and Turkey, Mongolian Persian. The origin of Hebrew is Gaiz mixed with Aramaic and Persian. And that was my other puzzlement about how come the Hebrew starts like Abraham the Hebrew and it didn't go any further back. And so I've just been getting revelation after revelation today and I hope that when you hear this that you'll hear I'm excited. So I pray that if you have any questions, you will ask me so I can explain it. So it's like lots of things are being cleared up for me. So then if this was created, the origin of Hebrew was created out of Giz. Well, see, that had been revealed to me also. So I, I was just really, really puzzled. And it makes me feel so happy that I can see somebody else has written all of this that Father had revealed to me spiritually as I continued looking for what is the truth. I thought that the all of the uh, Israelite tribes were of the tribe of Dan. And how could that be? Because it was the way it was explained. But then what is truth is right before you until the Holy Spirit opens it out. And then you see, okay, tribe of Dan is only one. And then you come across what is uh, the house, the house of Israel. And in searching and seeking, you come across Beta Israel, which means house of Israel, and these are Ethiopian people. 
So I know I'm putting a whole bunch of things together right now, but I'm I'm excited and I do want to share it in the event that you too are searching for the truth. And revelation after revelation is coming to you in such a flood. It's like a tsunami of, of revelations that I can hardly hurry up to to uh, to grasp with a uh, um the, uh, the, the, the deep understanding is there, but the deeper revelation so that I can understand it has come. So while I was still um, looking at the where the commandments were, how about this? This happened to me right, right uh, today. Then after I had just understood that, okay, the commandments were given in Ethiopia. The Torah was given in Ethiopia to Moses. And you can imagine also when I found out that Moses was a Cushite or Ethiopic, I just was just, oh my. I'm telling you, my head is so full of a flood of, things that were hidden and they're just flowing and flooding out from things that Father had already planted in me. So after I'm reeling about the Simeon Mountain and about the commandments given to Moses there, then I come across the Beta Israel, the return of a lost tribe, it says, and it says, the history of Ethiopian Jewry goes back millennia. For almost 2,000 years, the Beta Israel had their own community. Listen to this. Even their own kingdom and army in the what? S-I-M-I-E-N, Simeon Mountains, region of Ethiopia. I had to share. I just had to share this right now. So... So here we got Beta Israel, which means house of Israel. So the house of Israel contained those 10 uh, Israelite tribes that supposedly are lost. In some cases, it says they are not lost. So here I have a loss. It said the return of a lost tri tribe, but the Beta Israel means house of Israel. So that's tense for this word in the return of a lost tribe. And in the Simeon Mountain region of Ethiopia, where it is saying that the commandments were given. So where does that leave Mount Sinai and Mount Ho I'm just going to leave that right now because I'm so excited. It gives me something to think about. It says two words some of the dramatic ongoing saga of a lost tribe's return to the Jewish world mission, miracle and mission. Now, if I had not been studying that Beta Israel means house of Israel, I would think that that was one tribe and I would think that that was just the tribe of Dan. But since I've been studying and the Holy Spirit has been opening up the eyes of my understanding, I know what that says. It's, it sends a, a, a twin definition of one tribe as the house of Israel. Let's begin with a miracle. The history of Ethiopian Jewry goes back, again, I, I already said for almost 2,000 years, so I'm, I'm repeating. The Beta Israel had their own community, even their own kingdom and army in the Simeon Mountains region of Ethiopia, which I've already said. Their main city was Gonda, G-O-N-D-A-R, and their king was said to be a descendant of the Kohen Gadol, the high priest Zadok. Their golden age was from 850 to uh, 1270 CE when the community flourished and they lived autonomously. This is just from this article. While the Beta Israel was cut off from the rest of the Jewish world, indeed, they believed they were among the only Jews left on earth after the temple's destruction. Slowly, word of their existence began to filter out. 
Marco Polo and Benjamin of Tudela wrote of the existence of an independent Jewish nation, a mosaic kingdom lying on the other side of the rivers of Ethiopia. Eldad Hardani, a 9th century merchant and traveler, told at length the story of the lost tribes of Israel, including that of the ancient tribe of Dan, who lived in Cush, the K, capital K-U-S-H, the land of gold, mentioned in the first book of the Torah. They had five books of Moses, Shamash, Shamash he reported, but not the Talmud, we have today. Throughout the centuries, the Beta Israel fought numerous wars against other tribes throughout Ethiopia, some Christian, other Muslim, and were subjected to numerous attempts to forcibly convert them. Many were killed or sold into slavery. One adversary who sought to subjugate them, the Emperor Zara Yaakov, who reigned from 1434 to 1468, even proudly added the title exterminator of the Jews to his name. Yet despite all the efforts to eliminate the community and horrendous hardships, the Beta Israel survived and clung to their traditions. In the 16th century, the chief rabbi of Egypt, David ben Solomon, Ibn Abba, Zimra, also called the Radbar, C, 1479-1573, proclaimed that in terms of halakha, the Ethiopian community was certainly Jewish. He wrote, The matter is well known that there are perpetual wars between the kings of Kush, K-U-S-H, which has three kingdoms, the Israelites, the Christians, and the... Uh, the Israelites, the Christians, and the Israelites from the tribe of Dan. They know only a few biblical commandments, but are unfamiliar with the oral law. Nor do they light the can Sabbath candle. War ceases not from among them. He concludes that if the Ethiopian Jewish community wishes to return to rabbinic Judaism, they would be received and welcomed into the fold. Just as were the Karaites who returned to the teachings of the Rabbinites in the time of Rabbi Abraham. But I, I just want to stop uh, right here for right now because the thing that I am, what I am really focused on, I'm focused on the Simeon Mountain and the fact that the Ten Commandments was said to have taken place there, which means that the Ten Commandments were given to the the uh, given to the Ethiopian or Ethiopian or Cushite or people, and the fact that I'm giving I'm getting the connection so that it all makes sense because I googled all over the place trying to find. You know, the, the something just keeps saying outright, the Ten Commandments were given in Ethiopia. The Ten Commandments were given in Ethiopia. And it's like, I have to go hunt and search. And so I'm excited. I give honor to our Father. I give honor to Yahushua. And I give honor to the Holy Spirit, the teacher of righteousness and who leads us into all truth and open up the eyes of our understanding. If we seek Him, if we seek His face, if we seek His knowledge, if we seek His truth, He will not disappoint us. So that's just a little that I'm sharing here right now. And I do pray it gives you something to think about in terms of the commandments being given. As we all know over and over, uh, over and over again, it is said, Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, etc. And yet, here we find something else today to add to our knowledge so that the Holy Spirit can give us the depth of the truth, hallelujah, and the understanding of the knowledge 
that is coming to us today. But this this cleared up again, seeing that the language instead of stopping there at Hebrew and Abraham, like I've always asked, what is the language of Adam and Eve? What is the language of Enoch? What is that language? And some say it's called Suba also. So you got a lot of things going on. But I am glad to know that we are on the ancient path of truth. Being led by the spirit of our creator. The ancient of days who has ancient of ways to share with us. So I thank you and I pray that that this will be a blessing when you do hear it. Because I just had to stop what I was doing. I love to, I'm anointed to audio and and read and, and do what Father lead me to do. So I'm just very, very happy uh, for me to come across uh, this uh, confirmation today. Because I had already come across it, as I said but like confirmation today. So thank you so much. And if you have any feedback or anything that you have found uh, that outright said the commandments were given in Ethiopia, the fact that Moses was an Ethiopian and so was Abraham, hallelujah, or Cush or uh, from... Abraham was from the Earl of Chaldeans. Well, anyway, I'm going to stop right here, right here. May Yah bless us going out, coming in. May his countenance shine up on, on us. And may he grant us peace today, wisdom and knowledge, along with understanding and along with patience, to yield to the Holy Spirit and let him do the leading and guiding and quickening us as to when we ought to share and to share a knowledge with wisdom. Because I just want to make a notation at the end of this. The Heavenly Father opened the door for all who would like to come and join the family of Israel, the nation of Israel. He accepts us as homeborn, which means we become part of Israel. We are not outside. It doesn't matter whether we have brown eyes, blue eyes. It doesn't matter what color our eyes, our skin, our size, our race. The door has been opened. So I'm just happy to, to have more knowledge that I can share with people. That we are, if you're born again in John 17, no matter how you label yourself, we are part of the family that belong to the kingdom of our Heavenly Father and Creator, Yahuwah, Yah. Hallelujah. And we give praise unto you and Him and thank Him for Yeshua, the one we know as Jesus. We thank Him for Yahushua and various other ways that He accepted our faith, knowing that we are, 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 are searching for truth and learning a little bit here and a little bit there. And, and sometimes uh, hidden things come to the surface and we have to rely on the spirit, the teacher of truth that have been sent to lead us into all truth. And now I'm understanding Paul when he said he, he understood all mysteries and all secrets or something he said and I couldn't figure out what he was talking about now. I'm understanding that Father had revealed so much to him and others. May your day be crowned with knowledge and wisdom and understanding. May you continue to seek the most high with your whole heart, soul, and mind. And may truth come to you in clear, clear in clarity. And may your light so shine before that may your your light so shine your that your your work be such that your light will so shine before people that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Oh man, oh man, Baruch Shem, 
Yahuwah.